Here's the brief news from the world over this week. President Donald Trump rocked the geopolitical landscape in the Middle East on Wednesday, announcing that the United States will recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And there are plans in the works to relocate the U.S. Embassy there as well. On the domestic front, the move fulfills a campaign pledge. Internationally, it was widely condemned by world leaders, including Pope Francis, as being harmful to Middle East peace. Palestinians and some Muslims throughout the region greeted the news with protests and violence. In his announcement on Wednesday, President Trump said the move was a recognition of reality. It is also a dramatic break with decades of U.S. policy on Jerusalem and counters long-standing international assurances to the Palestinians that the fate of the city will be determined in negotiations. Israel annexed East Jerusalem in 1967. The Palestinians seek it as their future capital. However, Trump went out of his way to say the move is in no way intended to reflect a departure from America's deep commitment to facilitate a lasting Middle East peace agreement. We want an agreement that is a great deal for the Israelis and a great deal for the Palestinians. We are not taking a position of any final status issues including the specific boundaries of the Israeli sovereignty in Jerusalem or the resolution of contested borders. Those questions are up to the parties involved. More on this later in the show. And it was a stunning and unprecedented week on Capitol Hill as Democrat Senator Al Franken and Congressman John Conyers have both resigned amid sexual misconduct scandals. More than 30 Democratic senators called for Franken to step down after an eighth woman alleged misconduct, this time that he forcibly tried to kiss her after an interview on his radio show in 2006. This would be prior to Franken being elected Minnesota's junior senator in 2008. Democrat senators had been facing charges of hypocrisy for several weeks as they had called for Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore to bow out of the race amid sexual misconduct allegations from 40 years ago. Franken made his announcement from the Senate floor on Thursday. On the House side, Conyers stepped down on Tuesday after several women alleged sexual harassment by the longtime Michigan congressman. And a big development out of the Vatican in what could be a contradiction of canon law. Pope Francis has accepted a controversial interpretation of Amoris Laetitia as authentic magisterium. According to a brief statement this week by the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Pope Francis has ordered the official publication of both his September letter of support to the bishops of Argentina, as well as the bishops' original document favoring communion for divorced and civilly remarried Catholics. Cardinal Francesco Coco Palmiero, head of the Vatican's Council for Legislative Texts, says Pope Francis has, in effect, made the Argentine bishops' interpretation of Amoris Laetitia official teachings of the Church. We'll have much more on this complicated and very important story later in the show with the papal posse. You don't want to miss this. Back here in the United States, the United States Supreme Court ruled on Monday to allow the Trump administration's ban on travel to the U.S. by residents of six mostly Muslim countries. The high court permitted those restrictions to take effect pending decisions by the Ninth and Fourth Circuit Courts on the legality of the president's executive order. Currently, restrictions apply to travelers from Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Lebanon, North Korea, and some from Venezuela. Only two justices, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor, disagreed with the court's decision. On Wednesday, the Ninth Circuit Court out of Seattle heard oral arguments in the case. And in what could be a major precedent-setting case, the high court heard oral arguments this week in the case of a Colorado baker who declined to make a wedding cake for a gay couple. The clash pits baker Jack Phillips' free speech and artistic expression, as well as his religious freedom rights, against the gay rights claims of two men Phillips turned away in 2012.
Justice Anthony Kennedy appears to hold the key vote in this case. Although Kennedy penned the 5-4 to four decision providing the constitutional right to gay marriage in 2015, in this case, he seemed troubled by states' actions against Phillips. Colorado's Civil Rights Commission, he said, may have had a bias against Phillips, having called his claim of religious belief despicable. Justice Kennedy said tolerance is essential in a free society, and it appears that the Civil Rights Commission here has been neither tolerant nor respectful of Mr. Phillips' religious beliefs, end quote. And the oldest Catholic school in California has relinquished its official ties to the church and its Catholic designation. Officials at San Domenico School in San Anselmo, north of San Francisco, this week announced that the school will no longer be Catholic and will drop ties to the San Francisco Archdiocese. The head of the school, Cecily Stock, said that the current standards of the Western Catholic Educational Association were being more rigorously enforced and they do not align with the school's long-standing mission to embrace diversity and inclusion of all faiths and backgrounds. Earlier this year, the school faced a backlash as it had reportedly removed more than 160 statues of Jesus, the Holy Mother, the Holy Mother, the Blessed Mother, and other saints throughout the campus. The school's relationship with the Dominican Sisters of San Rafael will continue, according to a statement provided by the school. It was founded by the Dominican Sisters in 1850. And the Vatican Christmas tree and the nativity scene are now on display. The official inauguration and tree lighting ceremony took place Thursday in St. Peter's Square. The towering 69-foot spruce tree is a gift from the Archdiocese of Elk in Poland. About 60 years old, the tree lost its tip when it was struck by lightning some 70 years ago. It is adorned with ornaments designed by young cancer patients from several Italian hospitals and children from the North Shore region of central Italy, devastated by the earthquakes of last year, also made ornaments for the Christmas tree. The creche was donated by a Benedictine abbey in southern Italy, and it's done in the 18th century style. I feel like I'm the fashion channel, lifestyles of the Vatican. The nativity scene is inspired by the works of mercy and features 20 terracotta figures, some as tall as six feet. Next time, Martha Stewart can come help me with that read. Finally, please keep our dear friend, Father Andrew Apostoli, the Franciscan friar of the renewal in your prayers. He has long been a part of the EWTN family. He was a spiritual director to me, a good soul and a wonderful man. Father is nearing death. He's battling cancer. I ask you to keep him in your prayers this week, and I thank you for that in advance.